Is manual mode the holy grail in photography? I will give you an answer right away. No, it isn't. And I will explain to you why it is not. Hi, it's Peter here and let's get right into the business. Many photographers that are on phase three will tell you that manual mode is the holy grail of photography and the only way to make a proper exposure is using manual mode. And if you don't know who the phase three photographers are, you might want to watch that video after you have watched this video. Manual mode was very important, of course, during the time when we did not have automatic exposure. And we need to know a few other things also, how the metering works in a camera. And that helped a lot. And not saying that understanding that is not important, but in everyday photography, using manual mode is just, you don't need to do that. There's better ways. There are a lot of misunderstanding about manual mode. Some even think that you can use any combination of aperture, shutter speeds and ISO. But that's not true. The value of for exposure is determined by the amount of light. And it doesn't matter if you set it manually or automatically, it will be the same. The light won't change. So you will have the same EV value anyways. And sometimes even on forums, there are people asking that why my photographs are all white or, or totally black, uh, even though I'm using manual mode. And that is one reason that you should understand what the manual mode and what the exposure means. But it doesn't mean that you have to use manual mode except in few cases like studio work where you use external flashes, for example. But what is exposure, which can also be determined by the EV value? Exposure is a combination of shutter speed, aperture and ISO. And the combination that you use is determined by the light there is in the scene that you are photographing. That's the only thing that determines the EV value. And then from that, the combination that you're using for shutter speed, aperture or ISO, it all depends what you're photographing and what you want to tell, because all of these three components or settings will uh, have an effect on how the image will turn out. Shutter speed, of course, is something to do with the motion. The longer the shutter speed, the more motion blur there is in the image, which might be something that you want or not. And then aperture is controlling the depth of field. So you determine how much depth of field there is in an image by adjusting the aperture. And then ISO is something that you might raise up if there is a lot of darkness in the image or you're photographing the dark scenes and you can't get the other two components the way you want, then you might want to adjust the ISO. So understanding how the exposure works and how the metering works in your camera is of course valuable. But photographing with P, A or S or M doesn't matter. Why use the M when you can use the automatic even when the result will be the same anyways? Why not make it a lot easier for you? But how to get the right exposure? And I will talk about the right exposure later in this video. What does it mean actually? The key for correct and right exposure is exposure compensation. The metering in our camera or the light meter in our camera works the way that it sees everything mid gray. So if you're photographing fully automatic in a snowy conditions, the snow will be gr mid gray. And the same goes if you're photographing in something that is black, it will be mid gray. That's the way the light meter works. And the key is the histogram and exposure compensation. That's the proper way to make the exposure. Let the camera do the basic job and make the, you know, the basic values and then you compensate with the exposure compensation. If you want to turn the shutter speed or the aperture, it's up to you. It depends on what you want to tell with your image. Like I already said, how they affect motion depth of field. To determine the right exposure is learning how to read the histogram. And if you're using modern mirrorless cameras, you most likely can see the histogram in your EVF and LCD. So use that and learn how the histogram tells you about the right exposure. And here is some more information about histogram. And there is a lot more information about uh, right exposure and all that. You might want to watch that after this video. I will link to that playlist also in the description of this video. But let's continue with the topic. Before I tell you what exposure mode I mostly use, let's talk about what a right exposure means. In technical terms, it means that there's nothing overexposed and nothing underexposed. Then you have a proper exposure. And it's more important not to have overexposed areas in an image because those are lost. Underexposed isn't that bad. That might be 
a good thing because it gives you contrast and stuff like that and doesn't look that bad but overexposed to really bad on a digital file looks really bad there is some you know hard edges and all that it's a bit different than it was with film which was more natural looking overexposure so try not to overexpose your images but you want to do so that the exposure to the right is the method that you use because the most information that the sensor can capture is on the brighter side of the histogram. The more you can get values there, the better original you have. You need to do a bit editing, which is something that I will talk more later in this video too. So in photographic terms, the right exposure is the way that you have the best possible original. Because, like I said, all images need some editing. Before we talk about the editing a bit, let's talk about what exposure mode I use the most. I use aperture priority the most. The reason is that I can control the depth of field, which is mostly the thing that I want to control. I have the aperture on the front wheel and then exposure compensation on the back wheel, which is the most important aspect of adjusting the exposure. I will adjust it so that the histogram just hits the right edge of the scale, not going over and I also have the flag colors on, then I know that I have the best possible original to work on. And I could get this with manual mode too, but it would be a bit more work during the photography. Now I can only use my thumb and have my finger on the shutter button all the time. Just, you know, adjusting the exposure plus or minus, it depends of the scene. And then let's talk about the editing a bit. When we have the raw file, which most of us most likely will photograph, we will have a properly exposed image to work on. But why not make it proper right in the camera? Well, we actually do. If you're photographing ETTR, you need to slide the exposure slider to make the image a bit darker. That means that you will affect the mid-tones. And then sometimes you might want to lower the highlights and open up the shadows or darken them. It depends on what you want to tell. And that's why the right exposure is something to start on. And then the right exposure is a different thing on a final image. Because sometimes we, we even need to adjust the exposure a bit differently in different parts of the image. And making local adjustments, which is something that I do all the time. My main thing is usually that I separate the subject from the background with Lightroom masks. I think that's the best way to do. Then I can control the background and the subject differently. And usually I lower the exposure on the background it but it depends of course it's it's you know it depends on the image the reason i do that is that we do see first things that are on the brighter side so if our subject is brighter than the background it will pop out so that's one way of kind of like adjusting or not adjusting but uh, uh guiding the view of the viewer so the subject will have more attention which is of course what we want and we need to do local adjustments for that. So the exposure we make in camera while photographing is the starting point. Try to make it as good as possible without blowing the highlights or having too much underexposed areas. And then in the post-production or post-processing, you will twe tweak the different parts of the image a bit differently. What we talk about exposure and sometimes even contrast is something that you need to add but that's that's a different story it's got nothing to do with the exposure itself but the local adjustments are really important and here are some more videos about proper exposure and videos about ettr you might want to watch those next to get some more information about proper exposure which is really important part of photography but hey thanks for watching and bye for now